as I grew up, I sort of realised how um, small-minded that part of the world was, really, and um, realising I was queer, I'm also genderqueer, and it's just, like, the first time I heard the word gay, it was, like, used as an insult. Mm -hmm. And then um, being able to move to London, which was such, like, a bastion of, like, freedom, like, that's where <laughs> people can express themselves, and it's so diverse and um, creative and stuff. Georgia from the last dinner party. Hi. 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 I'm so excited about this episode. Yeah, you're like, having us. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool around here. Yeah, it's like a launch around. <laughs> um, so your band name is The Last Dinner Party, but it wasn't always The Last Dinner Party, was mm -hmm. it? It was just Dinner Party. It was just The Dinner Party. Just The Dinner Party. Yeah. And then what, you had to change it really recently? It was um, just before we were recording the album, or like as we were recording the album, sorry, like a year ago. Um, and it was when the Coachella for that year's lineup got announced and mm -hmm. there's this band, other band called Dinner Party. Mm -hmm. And then our manager kept getting loads of messages being like, how are the Dinner Party playing Coachella? They don't have any songs and they have like 800 Instagram followers. Really? Like, what is, like what is going how on? How have you done this? Um, obviously it wasn't us. So <laughs> yeah. we were like, okay, we have to change the name. Um, didn't want to though, because mm -hmm. we loved the name yeah, and yeah. then thought that the last dinner party would add a little bit more kind of yeah. theatre to it, a little I'm bit more saying. Last Supper vibe. That's what I was wondering because um, it obviously does like relate to like the Last Supper was, was one of my questions. Like, was did you think about that when you chose the name? Kind of a kind of semi-accidental, yeah. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. It was more like kind of thinking about like Last Shadow Puppets kind of. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. um, I felt the last is a good Mm -hmm. add-on um but yeah then it was kind of like oh it is quite yeah catholic yeah. and we have a lot of catholic imagery so yeah it fits but it's totally. also this kind of like um end of the world you know part of the end of the world let's yeah. have a big one yeah. vibe totally. as well which is good yeah. well, there, was there ever like the um like the idea to change the name altogether or were you always going to stick with it we had a few suggestions oh yeah we had some absolutely shit suggestions our producer <laughs> james ford suggested bean feast naming bean him feast. yeah name, name and james, james, ford. james ford said bean, bean feast, feast. Bean we thought feast? that's not very no. um, romantic no. <laughs> no. <laughs> very poetic i feel like people could run with that as well and it could get a bit like vulgar yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> so yeah no we were we were really attached to the name we'd built this whole world around it we were, yeah very very emotionally invested in the name and the concept and everything so when we were like oh you've got to change the name we were like no <laughs> so luckily we were we were all good and yeah. yeah i like the name better now actually i mean you guys are in australia for the first time except you're not obviously in australia no. for the you grew up here <laughs> yeah you grew up in canberra and sydney is that yes yeah, so i was born in canberra i lived there for five years and then moved to sydney so. to the northern beaches i'm from the northern beaches are you? Oh, where are you from, are you? I'm from i live in Narrabeen. oh no way i'm from avalon are you really? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. what school did you go to i went to bulgola plato uh, really? public and then i went to manly high school no wait, my partner went to bulgola plato no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. funny. A manly high, like the yeah. one next to Freshie high. The selective one, yeah, yeah, yeah next to Freshie. Shut up, that's yeah. so funny. I went to Freshie, so I was oh, next no way. Oh, yeah. I just think I would have graduated like a few years before you. Maybe, yeah, 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 that's yeah. That's so funny. That's so small, funny. Small, small world. Such a small world. Like Australia's tiny. It is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just this tiny world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. knows like, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you going to show these guys around like at all? I would love to have taken them to the beaches, yeah. but we just didn't have time yeah. this time. But yeah. hopefully next time we'll How get some. How many days do you have in Sydney? Um, we had three okay. and then we went around the houses a little bit, going to Adelaide and Melbourne and Brisbane. Now we're back just for one night and okay. then we're pissing off. Do you like Sydney? Yeah, I yeah. really like Sydney. The food's been amazing. Cool. Like, have not, no meal has missed. Really? <laughs> so good. Have you had to pick a favourite meal so far? Uh, the shakshuka at the hotel. Oh, really? <laughs> it was because we arrived at like five o'clock in the morning, absolutely starving, uh -huh. and the, the breakfast had just opened at the hotel. And it's it's, oh. it's also like a restaurant, Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like part of the hotel. And that was the best and one. Really? Yeah, we each had that like four times. I literally had it every morning. Yeah. It was so good. It was really oh, good. Yeah. And you got to go to the beach at all? Have you gone for a swim? Uh, no. We, no. we went to a bay. bay. Yeah. Oh, that bay. was beautiful. A one bay. Of one of the bays. <laughs> but no, I didn't get in. It's pretty oh, chilly. It's it is cold. Chilly. I did swim in a, in a hotel pool, though, yeah, which was nice. Bad. I quite like being in the water when the air's cold. Mm. But yeah. Um, yeah, the waves were a bit scary. It's pretty cold. refreshing, though, like jumping in the ocean when it's like crisp. I love like, that. I love yeah. it. And then you get out and you put your clothes on and you're like yeah. warmer, the mm -hmm. hot coffee, Top or 10 tea. feelings, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah.
you guys have just played Glastonbury for the second time. Mm -hmm. how, like how, well, I'm sure you've been asked already, but I just want to know how was it? There's a lot of build up for things like that because they're televised and, you know, there's a big crowd. So I was like more nervous than I've been in a long really? time for that one. Um, but yeah, we, as we always do, you get on stage and it's absolutely fine. And then you get off stage and you're like, all right, let's get fucked. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask, so, like, yeah. what's it like? Because like, obviously, obviously the crowd, I mean, first of all, the crowd, I was watching videos and footage from it and it looked like a massive mm, crowd. Like, yeah. so that must have been so, I guess, compared to the first time, was it a lot big? Did you notice the difference? Mm. Yeah. 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 So that yeah, would we were, have been... We were in a tent at like 11 a.m. Yeah. on a Saturday morning the first yeah. year, which was still amazing. And I love playing big tops at festivals. Yeah. Like, like the atmosphere is so good. But um, I mean, yeah, when we got the offer through to play, Glastonbury again I was like yay we get to go to Glastonbury I'm yeah. sure we'll play like the tent again or like a, you know another of the hundred stages and then we got told it was the other stage and I was literally like what yeah, yeah. it's enormous it's massive really it's yeah. massive yeah is it hard to then fill the space as like do you feel like it's too big as a band like to fill is it does it feel tricky at all it's I think we've learned over the years that we've played um how to fill the space yeah. and how to to move in a way that like looks like we're owning it. When we first um, started, we got this random um, support slot for the Rolling Stones in Hyde Park. And it was like this huge, huge stage, biggest stage I've ever seen. And we had only done like tiny little pub gigs at that point. So where you don't even have room to move. So we all stood there. We had so much room, meters and meters, meters we could have used. We were all just oh, so right next to each other because we were so used to tiny pub stages. If you look at photos, we're all just huddled up together. Oh, yeah. That's, That's so, so much space. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, like separation anxiety. Yeah, we were just like, nice. We also didn't have like cables long enough to oh, go yeah, further true. away. <laughs> we had to be like right next to our arms. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two meter cable. That's so funny. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you get off stage and then what, like, what's it like? Does everybody hang out all together? Like, do you see other bands back there? What, what, what's it like? Yeah, I mean, in the dressing rooms and stuff, you share like an, an area with other artists. Um, but we mainly just got off stage and we're like, who's got a margarita? Yeah. yeah. Someone and urgently. And three jugs appeared. Yeah. <laughs> they have a margarita. Yeah. Okay. Oh my right. God. Right, cool. cool. This weekend's off to a good start then. Yeah. so fun. And you stay like on site and kind of like hang out? Yeah, there? you can do. We did. Mm -hmm. um, I just camped and so it was Oh, really you camped? Fun. Yeah, I camped. It wasn't too muddy or anything this year? No, it was, the weather was, it was pretty good. dry. I was like, because it's been a really shit summer in the UK, so it's just like raining every day and whatever, but it cleared for Glastonbury. Yeah, and one Glastonbury shining alone. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask about Sinner, the song. Did, we, did you write the lyrics to Sinner? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. I was watching an interview and I was really curious because you said that um, it was about like the loss of being a child and then sort of sort of growing up and then accepting yourself for who you are and then those two things kind of marrying together. And I was wondering if you could like expand on that a little bit and tell me a bit more about that because I find the I find the connection between like myself as a child or a childhood and that yeah that loss and that disappearance but then trying to also connect with that so fascinating yeah i think for me as well it links so much to like the place because i grew up very much in the countryside like middle of nowhere no buses um in between two farms and then kind of as i grew up i sort of realized how um small-minded that part of the world was really and um realizing i was queer and also gender queer and it's just like the first time I heard the word gay, it was like used as an insult. Mm -hmm. And then um, being able to move to London, which was such like a bastion of like freedom, like that's where <laughs> people can express themselves and it's so diverse and um, creative and stuff. When I finally got to move there, it was like, oh, I can be my fullest version of myself mm -hmm. here. And But then where I'm from in the north in, in Yorkshire, it's so beautiful. And I had such a, a lovely childhood there, um, climbing trees and, you know, rolling around in meadows and stuff like very picturesque um in the two days that it was sunny yeah right yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah kind of going back there and feeling the con the kind of constraints of it again yeah after having experienced the freedom of like the city mm. and and being in a different kind of cultural melting pot yeah. um so yeah I think it's it's trying to marry those two things and trying to find that that combination in yourself rather than where you are totally. so you can take that yeah. wherever you Wow. Did you know when you were going to, when you were moving to London, the like, I guess like the contrast of the two, what it was going to be like, or was it quite like shocking the coming from such a small town? Um, I don't think I anticipated how much impact it would have on me. Mm. Like I thought, oh, I'm going to experience all this great stuff and like I'm going to take in 
or there's stuff in the city, but I didn't think it would like allow me to change yeah, internally. Totally. Um, but I visited a lot because my auntie lived there. Yeah. Um, and I've always loved it. So I was mostly just like excited to go and, <laughs> and soak in all the art and the music and everything. Yeah. But, yeah. Does it, do you feel like when you go home that you're able to just stay, like continue, like do you change persona at all when you go home or is it hard to, I don't know what the question is, but do you kind of know what I mean? Mm. Like, so I feel like I have to kind yeah, of like it, Yeah, at all. Like, I that... really try not to now. Yeah, um, yeah. And also, I'm very lucky that my kind of immediate, or like one of the towns I live near, Hebden Bridge, is mm. like <laughs> the lesbian capital. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I actually think I heard you talk about yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. funny. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's not yeah. where I went to school and stuff. So okay. that was kind of a, a, yeah, kind of an arty um, gay scene. So yeah. I can I can definitely curate my my time up north. So <laughs> totally. Not, totally. Not to Halifax. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't move to London when you first left Australia? No, I moved to like a, a pretty small city. Like it was still a city, but it was um, small. And then I moved to London for uni yeah. after that. And yeah, I think I have similar, obviously the countryside and whatever is, is a different kind of um, experience. But I think everyone who moves to London, I mean, growing up in the suburbs and then moving to England and then moving to London, mm. it's kind of... Um, yeah, you do you do find yourself kind of changing subconsciously and um well, i think london is so expansive that it you don't have to be anyone mm -hmm. so you kind of naturally become just more yourself because yeah. there's not a overriding scene or something kind of like a, a an aesthetic or a vibe or whatever mm -hmm. it's so big and so anonymous that you naturally fall into the mm. pattern of your truest self, I think. Uh, yeah. um, but, you know, coming back here, I still feel like, you know, I see my high school girlfriends and it's just like, oh, none of you have changed. I've not changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. That's so nice coming back <laughs> and seeing it. Yeah, right. <laughs> totally, totally. It's so funny because it's so true. Like when you're in London and you're like on the tube and you look around at everybody just in your one carriage, Yeah. it's the diversity is insane yeah it's amazing and, and especially coming from you know sydney and, yeah. and the northern beaches it's a completely different world yeah, so yeah. I think it can that can be kind of it's a blessing and a curse yeah. it, is, it can be quite isolating mm. like you could get on the tube in the most ridiculous outfit and nobody would look at you twice <laughs> yeah. and like that's a great thing but it's also it, yeah it can be kind of depressed <laughs> yeah. when it's look like at me mid yeah somebody give me attention yeah. Yeah. it's like mid-january and you're just like oh yeah. have a nice, I'll have a connection <laughs> totally totally so lizzie you write some lyrics on the um album or have written some lyrics on the album georgia you haven't written any yet not yet not yet, not yet. <laughs> um when you're writing, do you ever think about writing to like what you would have want to have heard as a younger person and like to that maybe younger generation at all? Hmm. Um, probably not, to mm. be honest. I think I think something that's important, I know for Abby as well, um, who's written most of the lyrics on the yeah. album, it's it's all about kind of authenticity and and like there's a lot of romanticizing mm. of your own life when you're mm -hmm. writing like poetry about your own experiences. Um, so in that way, it kind of heightens it. So it's a little bit, you know, not real, but um, it all comes from real feelings that I feel like, at least I feel like I've seen people connect with things that are super, super personal. Mm -hmm. So like Beautiful Boy has resonated yeah. with so many people in such a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. And that I know for Abby was like, that was such a singular like um, experience for her mm -hmm. of like gender envy. Mm. And can you tell people who maybe don't know like what the like meaning behind that song is like, yeah beautiful yeah boy. um beautiful boy it's kind of yeah she has this friend who's a very beautiful man who she loves very much and um he told the story of going on a holiday and he like lost his phone and he lost his wallet and he didn't know where he where his hotel was and he just like kind of got by fine and just like on hitchhike the, with the some like strangers weirdos and yeah. yeah they put him up in a nice place to stay and gave like fed him and whatever and yeah it's like the privileges of being a, mm -hmm. a man and mm -hmm. a beautiful man at that yeah and how you can move around the world in a way that even the most beautiful woman can't mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and that feeling of envy of like absolutely you know, there's even if you're the most beautiful woman in the world there's still the constraints of being a woman yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but yeah so that's such a specific experience to abby but yeah. that i think the more specific you get the more it can resonate with mm. people basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i feel like trying to write like a, a generic like oh you know unrequited love song 
mm. will never yeah, resonate as well as like you saying this one person did this to me and totally. like you know it made me feel this exact way yeah. absolutely so yeah I think that's it's definitely has to be really personal for it to connect with people I think mm. absolutely so then when you um do have a song that you've written lyrics to or Abby has does, does, does she or then you bring that to the band to show or how does it well or do you all kind of go through that creative process together? Or? I think it's, it's been very personal to the lyricists on the record so far and then brought to us and the rest of the band add the music yeah, to it. Cool. So it's not like um, the lyrics itself and never kind of work in progress mm -hmm. kind of things. Um, we don't really discuss them. We don't really like, discuss them. I didn't no. know what Burn Alive was about until really... we started doing this <laughs> part and then I was like, oh, that's really interesting, that's cool. Um, <laughs> to be fair though, the, one of our new songs we play on the set, Second Best, Emily wrote the majority of that. Mm -hmm. um, but then when it came to the lyrics, we ended up with a kind of mishmash of Emily wrote the choruses um, Abby wrote the verses and I wrote the kind of bridge and okay. outro. So that's so, lyrically, so that's, that's so nice. Mm. It's like such a, yeah, that's true, a collage. Actually. That's yeah. cool. So hopefully, we're still kind of figuring out the writing process, but we'll yeah. be able to do that more because it's really. One of my questions later on, but you've said second best now, so I'm going to ask. I was like snooping around on your Discord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And I was going, it's going it's I do that. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. I mean, everyone's so sweet and so beautiful in there, and it's like it's such a lovely like it's experience, really cool. yeah, actually. I love it. <laughs> um, but they're all obsessed with second best. And, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Like, it's funny when you like, because I was typing anonymously to people <laughs> and like kind of just trying to like, I don't know, I just wanted to get the vibe. Yeah. And when I typed in the word second best, a meme pops up. And mm. it's like second best has been um, brought up, or I can't remember exactly what it said, and it's got like a little jumping person. Second best mention. Yeah, second oh, yeah. best mention, that's what it was. Have you seen it? No, but oh, I know that's yeah. what it was. Yeah, second oh, best mention. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was wondering, is, so, is that going to appear on album two? I'm sure. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's it, a mainstay in the set, and it's so fun, and everyone knows the words now who like have been to multiple shows or um, are a, a big fan. So, yeah, it's it's really fun one to play. So fun to play live. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to ask. The like response from the crowd, do they get really... Because I guess because it's not a released song. Yeah, so yeah. It maybe also can make the audience feel like they're in a club of sorts. Like, yeah. Because it's like, we know this, it's yeah. special. Yeah, and it's, and it's kind of harking back to where we started, which is kind of getting um, the hype and the buzz around us purely based on live shows mm -hmm. alone and the kind of bootleg recordings that people would take at those club shows and share around <laughs> and so whatever. Cool. So now when we do play a live song, it kind of makes a, a lot more of an impact mm -hmm. and people start kind of spreading it around. But Guessing it, the lyrics. Guessing the lyrics <laughs> and, you know, like guessing the name of the song. Sometimes we'll put like a silly name on the set list so people don't know what the song's called. Oh, we have this joke where we replace the S's for Z's in words. Oh, so yeah. we were calling second best and second, second, second best. Oh, second. And we had that on the set list. And then like The Guardian or something. The Guardian. Literally reported like, the new song is second best. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> and it's just like Very an in-joke and Very suddenly good. it's so like stupid. in the national news. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Um, yeah, because you're saying like talking about your live show, because you're a completely live band. Mm -hmm. So people who don't know what that means, just give a quick rundown of what a live band means. Yeah, I mean, it's just... Um, kind of abandoned in the more old fashioned sense of like, we got together, wrote the songs and then started gigging um, before we even thought about recording anything. So the live show was um, extremely important to us and kind of the only thing that we could do. Like, yeah. you know, as a band, it's really expensive to record and, um, you know, make stuff. So it's extremely cheap to just get your guitar on your back and get on the tube and yeah. go to a pub. So that's kind of and what- And make 50 pounds between- And make 50 quid between <laughs> us that you immediately on pints. spunk on pints. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we just loved playing live and we mm. were went, um, uninterested in recording stuff until it was ready, which was, you know, a couple of years in, in the making. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the there's a lot more emphasis on um, recording stuff before it's maybe ready or being yeah. more of an internet presence than a live band. And we were very um, much more interested in being the live band That's aspect cool. that you had to go to a club and see rather yeah. than go online and be able to listen to anything. Totally. And then you, cause you played, before you ever released a debut single, you were playing live. Yeah. And then you obviously would have had so much freedom to place, to see what songs were working with the crowd. So did that have an effect on what songs were put onto the album? Mm. Yeah, and also the writing of the songs. Yeah. Some of them weren't, like, um, the Nothing Matters guitar solos, it, that changed. Mm. Um, oh, really? From, I think, Emily playing it live and feeling like it wasn't quite hitting. So, yeah. Like a different one. so yeah, it definitely 
and portrait. And portrait changed loads. That yeah. used to have like a spoken word verse. Yeah, so yeah. Was, I loved, but Abby was like, it's not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> one. So yeah, no, definitely um, yeah. playing live was a big part of the writing process. So yeah. Hopefully we can still do that. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Do you think that now that you're like obviously bigger than you were then, that you that, that freedom doesn't exist as much anymore? I think it's changed yeah. for sure. Because now when we play a new song, I think we're all kind of perfectionists and we want the parts that we play to be really good mm -hmm. and because we know that people will film that and then potentially get attached to that mm -hmm. version of things and perhaps the version that we then go on to release is completely different yeah. from that and then they're Feelings disappointed or yeah. whatever. So mm -hmm. I think there's a, there's a lot more to kind of think about in that regard rather than before we could just be like, should we play this and then just play it and no one Absolutely. knows what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's certainly not going to stop us from playing new stuff and, and from changing yeah. the as, as we go, because yeah. I think that's what makes us happy and that's how we've written before. Change. Yeah, so. and we're going to keep changing the stuff we already play. Like, yeah. it's, it's nice to mess around with, you know. 100%. Totally. Well, one of the coolest play. things yeah. when I see a band live, I in my opinion, is when you like, something about the song is completely different yeah. to how it's been recorded. Yeah, I love that. Um, or they'll go off onto like maybe just a little like, jamming session yeah. or something is yeah. so amazing really cool. so that's really cool yeah, yeah yeah we'll definitely do so much stuff like that just because we like to have fun with it and keep and it keep it fresh for us as well as the audience so yeah yeah totally. expect jazz jam interludes <laughs> totally totally <laughs> One thing that I also noticed as well is that you don't have like an official drummer in the band. Is that mm. true? Mm -hmm. But you have is Casper? Ca yes, is it with Kasper you. Miles. Yeah, yeah. With you at the moment. Yeah. How did that work then when you're playing around London? Did you just not have a drummer, or like before mm. you were like signed and everything? We had just a series of drummers yeah, that okay. we would. Um, work with and yeah. then it was always just the five of us and we were like oh maybe we should have a permanent drummer but then it just worked out that we were kind of swapping people in and out mm -hmm. um regularly just because drummers are hard to come by yeah. they're, they're really always busy demand, really. every drummer in london is in about four different bands <laughs> really? well, and they also play on the west end or something <laughs> like just random shit yeah. like that so or they go they get a jazz Scholarship. Yeah, yeah, okay. to, to okay. Chicago. Fine. We had a trauma do that. Yeah, there's no, yeah. yeah, there's no hard feelings here. <laughs> yeah, sorry, no. sorry, Dave. Dave's so amazing. <laughs> so like, yeah, we're really happy for Bye, you. Dave. Bye, Dave. <laughs> funny. Um, because you, Georgia, were in a band with your brothers, right? When I was like a teenager. Yeah. Did you ever get yeah. them to play drums? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Henry would love that. <gasps> oh, that's so cute. That'd be so yeah. funny. What's it called? We, were, we didn't have a name oh, because we just entered like our high school talent shows and stuff. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> really oh funny. Are you close in age? Yeah, 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 like a year apart each. So I would play bass and sing <laughs> and then Tom would play guitar and then Henry would play drums. Oh it's my God. so funny. We did Seven Nation Army at the high school talent yes. show. Yes, yeah. We didn't even win. Oh, what? No, That's no. criminal. I know. We should go back. <laughs> do well, to be fair, the, the guy who won was um, playing the flute and hula hooping at the same time. So oh. Fair enough. No, I would both talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sees are on a TV screen. We already spoke before about like um, Beautiful Boy and kind of the male experience in the world compared to female. And then in the lyrics here, it says, when I put on that suit, I don't have to stay mute. I can talk all the time because my shoulders are wide. Mm -hmm. um, so there's obviously like a lot of themes, if you would agree with me, because mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you what the yeah. album's about. <laughs> but there's a lot of themes on the record that are about like embracing masculine qualities. Mm -hmm. And why is it like, I guess, important to you to write about that? And then like the um, the theme being like embodying more masculine roles than feminine roles. Mm -hmm. I really like that you've um, picked out on that because I think that people often um, misread the record as a, a deeply feminine mm. and like entirely feminine um, experience because it has the kind of delicate melody and talks about emotions and heartbreak and yearning and stuff. So I think it's a misrepresentation to say it's like a really feminine record because a lot of it is about yeah. yearning for um, the, the experience of being a man, like you mm. know, it's multiple songs are kind of on that, on that theme. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's, uh, I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> okay. Well, just like the, the, the <laughs> desire to be able to speak about these topics and like, you know, is it a collective desire, but through all of you or, you know, mm. like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't speak for, can't speak yeah. for everyone. everyone. Certainly me yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly me and yeah. Abby. I yeah. think, you know, we're all queer people. So yeah. it's yeah. kind of. Um, because it's so important, I think, like, I don't know. I, 
as a woman, you feel so many times that you have to kind of be something or put in a box. But like, I was literally thinking about this the other day and, and I was writing about it because I remember being like younger and buying a book and it was about like how to be a woman mm. because I didn't quite fit into like, I was hanging around all these very quite feminine girls and they're all beautiful and everything mm. like that, but I never quite fit into that box and they would like have, you know, baths together and take photos <laughs> with flowers. And I was just like, and that's beautiful and amazing, but I couldn't quite fi find my footing in that. Mm. And I didn't know what it meant to be a woman. And so then reading lyrics like that and being like, I don't know, that there's no one set box that yeah. you have to put yourself in. Um, and that those themes on the album that I did get from that, I think it's mm. really important to speak about. Yeah, and I, and I hope that people do if they, mm. I think a lot of what we talk about is um, kind of hoping to, to provide um, younger people who maybe feel like outcast or, or not like they fit in anywhere because that's kind of the, the young people that we were. Um, mm find kind of somewhere where they can feel like there are people who have had um also who see the world in the same way as them maybe and like it's the lyrics aren't written to to speak to those people necessarily but yeah. I think um the the whole project of the band yeah. kind of it it's a nice thing that um yeah, young people who who felt like outcast mm -hmm. by their friendship groups and never felt like they fit in in their kind of high school or their, yeah. their like gender role or anything can um just be completely like themselves Absolutely. in in our crowds or just in our discord or whatever yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> no it is it's so important because it's so i don't know i think also i grew up at a funny time where it was like we just before i mean social media is such a great tool for yeah. young people to actually kind of embody themselves a lot to see that there's other people similar to you so yeah, I don't know. I think it was just really cool that those things exist. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> if the last dinner party were to never play another show ever again, mm. what would you want the legacy to be? Whoa. Ooh, I just that's, got goosebumps. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. Ooh. <laughs> uh, the legacy. Do you know? No, that's just nope. laughing. They asked that question on the bear. Did on they? the new season of the bear. Yeah. Oh really? They have a whole bit where they ask, they each ask each other like what do you want yeah. your legacy? I haven't seen the new season. Well, I, there you go. They stole my question. <laughs> <laughs> um wow. I think it's 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 funny like being in a band and having released music and obviously people kind of around the world know who we are because the idea of like having a legacy mm. <laughs> as a person is really weird like a, a lasting impact on mm -hmm. anyone or anything in the world is quite a, a daunting mm -hmm. kind of um, concept. But yeah, I don't know. I, I suppose like I would want to come back to the idea of, of like community and mm. um, acceptance of um, your most emotional, most vulnerable, most like devastated, euphoric, like whatever self that you are. I think just um, I would love for it the legacy to be about how people felt mm -hmm. listening to our music and Absolutely. being at our gigs mm -hmm. and the emotion, the emotion that you'd felt yeah. and yeah like the, the sense of kind of intangible connection to the crowd and to us and um, for all of that to, to last yeah. past our last ever gig. <laughs> yeah it's true though I mean like I mean this is so kind of doesn't relate but it's like I was reading a bunch of your YouTube comments and somebody said that the band is like if like angels fell down and passed Freddie Mercury on the way <laughs> and then like got a little bit of like, um, what was it, like uh, advice from Kate Bush yeah. and like all this stuff. And I was like, that's really cool. And it's like, if like, you know, people talk about Freddie Mercury in that way, like mm. it's like the legacy he's left is this sound that mm. people still refer to mm. when listening to new music. So it's kind of like, that's also a cool way to look at it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Follow fortune cookies, <laughs> viewers with video questions, have a... Mm. Right around that one. I'll do this one. <laughs> do, you, do you bite it open or do you just crack it? You can do whatever you I'm want. I'm more of a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> ah. uh. If you could invent a holiday, what would it celebrate? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. What do you like? <laughs> <laughs> remember anything like right shakshuka now. breakfast <laughs> yeah you know what i'd have a national shakshuka day everyone has to make and eat shakshuka um, as a group of friends and family oh, I love and you that. also have to have it so hot it burns the roof of your mouth off okay i did that three days in a row 
and it's part of the experience. Okay. Mm. I like it. I'm into it. I'm into it. I might like trick you and just be like, yeah, but the root of my mouth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does yours say? If you had to live in a TV show, which one would you choose? That's good. That's good. That is a good one. I just, I, the, all of the TV shows that I watch are so like, Miserable. Though. Like books. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Well, like the last of us. Like. <laughs> yeah, also the phrasing of you have to live. Yeah, there. got it. Yeah, not yeah, not yeah. you want to. Because, like, I would say, like, Game of Thrones, but also, like, Ooh. kind Ooh. of a dodge set up for, like, women. Yeah, mm. and also if you're one of the small folk. Yeah. Mm. Fucked. Yeah. You yeah. <laughs> be a bit smelly. Yeah. I think. <laughs> uh, maybe Doctor Who. As, as the companion. Oh, cute. cute. That's cute. Um, That's great and we could just travel the world in the TARDIS and Hopefully you don't kill some like your memory. Yeah, the, some fuck anything. shit happened there as well, but it looks like fun. Yeah, totally. Well, That's a last. great answer. Yeah, I'm going to go Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. So you. much. Oh my God, this is so nice. Oh my God, this is so nice. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah, so really, really good. And so well researched and everything. Like sometimes people don't know a single thing about us. So your album's coming out soon yeah it's like uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no that's amazing that's really means a lot to me yeah so, honestly yeah. it was great thank really you. really yeah, I wish you all the success with this it's really oh, cool thank you so much mm. next time you're in Oz we'll have to catch up again and yeah like, we'll love yeah that. come in and have a absolutely that would be great that would mm. be cool that'd I'm be hoping fun. to do that with a few guests like get them back in and mm. like, kind of follow the do the Billy Eilish yes thing. exactly <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>